Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you once again. Uh, today we're going to be solving the add binary problem on leak code. It's problem number 67. Uh, historically, this has been a very popular problem. Uh, I know it has been asked that at Facebook, at least in the past, uh, it's labeled or tagged, sorry, as an easy problem. I'd respectfully disagree. I, I'd put this one closer to medium because I think there are um, a couple of intricacies that aren't necessarily obvious right off the bat in, in terms of how to solve it. Now, as with most problems, there are a, a couple of approaches that we can take. I'm going to be focusing on, on one today, one that I think would kind of be the most um, acceptable and, and reasonable, as well as most efficient answer to give uh, in an interview. Uh, so let's think about what we're doing here, or rather, maybe I shouldn't skip ahead and just read the question for those of you who are, are unfamiliar. Uh, basically, we're given two strings. They're binary strings, meaning they contain only the digits 1 and 0. Um, and so when we're given these digits, we need to simply add them up and, and return the binary number we'd get. Um, so to give you an example, I, I, and I think I can kind of, I'll, I'll draw this one out here. Uh, if we took, oops, get the pen. I always do this, I always forget the pen. Let's say that I gave you one, one, and, and one. The way that we add these two in binary would be, um, the one and the one would, would kind of add up to two, although two isn't a, a representation in binary. Uh, so we, we know that, you know, one zero is, is two in the, the binary realm. So we would we write the zero and we'd have to carry a one. Once we get to this point here now, we see that, you know, one and zero would just give us one. However, we have this one carried forward. So we, we put the, the two here, one and one is two or one zero in, in binary. I'm not gonna do a full walkthrough here on how to add binary numbers. Um, I'm gonna kind of run with the assumption that you are just familiar enough with them. Uh, however, in order to solve this problem, we do need to talk about the possible different combinations of additions that we can, that we can have in a, in a binary addition. So let's pretend that we've got something like, you know, let me come up with a couple numbers here. Kind of flying off the seat of my pants here. We'll say zero, we'll say one, zero, one, one. So we can have a couple different combinations. And maybe I'll do a one here as well. So a few different things that can happen here. When we're adding these numbers, kind of like in grade school, we're gonna start from, from right to left. Um, and, and this is the way that we are going to be coding the solution as well. We'll be going from right to left. There's a couple things that we need to note here on on how, on how binary works and the different cases that we can come across. If I get a zero plus a one, or a one plus a zero, and either way, that'll give me a one. Same thing with one plus zero, I said one, or sorry, one. If I get a zero plus a zero, we're simply gonna say zero, all these cases are, they're, they're pretty boring. These are vanilla, it's exactly what we'd expect. Where things start to get slightly interesting is when we have a one plus a one. When we have a one plus a one, if we were working in, you know, in the in the decimal base, we would simply put a two. However, in binary, we actually get one zero, meaning that when we're going through this problem, if we're, if we're kind of adding this manually, really, we would jot down a zero and we would carry the one. And this carry is, is gonna be the crux of, of, not necessarily the crux, but really the, the complexity point where most people get tripped up. And so we'll see how we're going to deal with it, not only carry it forward, but actually implement it in the code uh, very shortly. Similarly, I should also say that if we had a, a 1 plus a 1, uh, plus maybe a, a 1, which was a, a carry, um, in this case, also what we, would, uh, what we would have to do would be to say, well, we're adding these two, so we'd have the, the one zero, and then we're adding another one. So we will actually drop a, a one here, but I'll say plus carry, meaning also, but we're still gonna have to have to carry a, a one over. These are the scenarios or, 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 or kind of combinations that we're gonna have to deal with. And this is an exhaustive list because we are only adding two numbers. Uh, so with that in mind, let, let's kind of finish the walk through this example, and then we'll see how we're, how we're gonna implement this in code. Starting from the, the right-hand side over here, the, the one and the zero will simply give us one. That's, that's the scenario right over here. The zero and the zero will give us zero, and that's the scenario, nothing fun happening here. Now, this is where things get interesting. One and one will give us one zero. 
or as we said, we're gonna jot down the zero and we're gonna have to carry the one up here. Now that I have one and one, again, that, that's gonna give me kind of two or 10 in, in binary. So I'm gonna have to do zero and carry the one. Once again, I have one, zero and one. The zero and the one in and of themselves would just give me a one. But we have another one from the carry, which will give us zero and one. Now, once again, this is where we have, we have this scenario over here. I've got a one and a one, which would otherwise give me 10. And I've got the carry here. So I'm gonna have to drop a one right over here, take the carry, and then now we've made it to the end. And so this one over here is in fact just the one, but we have this carry right over here. And so with that carry, we are gonna need to jot down our, our final addition, which is uh, 10. Um, the way that we, the, well, sorry. The way we would do this in code is, is we would say, well, I see a one and a one, so I'm just gonna drop a zero here. Um, and you know, as well, um, because we've made it to the end and there's still a carry, and this is gonna be the key point, I've made it to the end and there is still a carry, I'm going to add a one to the beginning of that, of that string. If that didn't make sense, I would encourage you to pause the video, rewind it a couple minutes to see this over. Uh, if it still doesn't make sense, stick with me, let's make it to the end, and, and maybe as we go through the code, it'll make a bit more sense. Otherwise, feel free to drop your questions in the comments down below, as always. Uh, I think at this point, though, we're in a good spot to jump over to the code and see what that would look like. One thing, actually, sorry, I, I've kind of pot cut the video here and, and taken a step back. One thing that I would like to add is uh, there is an alternate approach to this problem, which would be to say, um, let me take my binary strings and convert them to decimal numbers, add the decimal numbers as, as we would, just you know, saying A plus B, and then converting the decimal number back to binary. Um, this approach could work. There's, there may be a couple of reasons that I wouldn't suggest it in an interview setting. First approach is that you know, it, it might take a bit of extra mathematical gymnastics in order to convert numbers to and from binary and, and decimal. Um, if you're super comfortable with that, it's an entry, it's a, you know, you've walked your interview through that approach and they're cool with it, by all means, you know, have a field day. Uh, however, on, on the other side of it, there, there's a look, there's always the one liner to stuff like this. I understand that in Python, there are ways to convert these strings um, into decimal, add them, convert them back in one cheeky line and, and just send that as it is that's not going to fly in an interview, right? So they're testing more than anything, especially at the, at the fan companies, your logic and your ability to reason through how to get through these things, as opposed to your knowledge of, of built in potentially obscure functions that exist strictly in the domain of the, of the language that you're operating in. Um, so I just do want to acknowledge that that solution or approach does exist, but it's not one that I'm going to be covering. And just because I don't think really think it's the most uh, appropriate one to run with, again, in an interview setting. Now, with that said, let's actually jump into the code. So what we want to do is, like I said, we want to start by adding the digits from, from kind of from right to left. So what I'll do is I'll create two pointers. I'll call them maybe i underscore a for index a. That's going to be equal to the, the length of a minus one and index of b, which is equal to the length of b uh, also minus one. I will also note that I've, I've checked the constraints here and it says that we will uh, in fact get legitimate strings, each of which has a length um, and they don't contain any leading zeros. So that's why there's no uh, error checking that I've incorporated here. Um, one more thing we said we're gonna need is we'll definitely need a carry. That carry value can initialize it to zero. We don't have a carry originally. Um, and also, of course, we're gonna have a result which we want in the form of a string. Uh, as per usual, I like to, to jot down where I'm going to return my result right at the end just to keep me grounded. And then all the magic is going to happen right here. So let's think about this. We're going to need to enter some loop. And the way that we want that loop to operate is to continue to point at the numbers A and B, kind of from, you know, from right to left or right to left, sorry, uh, until we get to the end of both of them. What that means is we're going to want to keep going through until, or, or rather should I say while, i underscore a is, is greater than or equal to zero, uh, and i b is greater than or equal to zero as well. Even if they're going at different speeds, um, or sorry, they'll be going at the same speed, but even if one ends and the other doesn't, we'll still keep going through this loop in the meantime. Um, now, the one thing that 
kind of maybe won't be as obvious is, is we're going to want to keep a, a total of the column that we're in every single time. That total, I'm going to begin by saying that it's equal to the value of the carry. And we'll see why once we actually have a carry, I think it'll make a bit more sense. But kind of trust me blindly in, in this one first step here. Um, the next thing we want to do will be a bit more intuitive. And uh, what we're going to want to say is that um, if, you know, if uh, I underscore A is basically, we want to say if I of A is is greater than or equal to zero. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to say, let me take the integer value of that of that point that we're well, the number that we're pointing at and add it to my total. Uh, so what I'll do there is I'm going to say uh, total plus equals a at i of a. Except remember that a is a string. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually convert this to an integer. Oops convert it to an integer and add it to my total. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a minute. I'm going to do the same thing with B. So I'll say if, if I underscore B is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to add the total and convert uh, the, the value at, at I of B. Um, now, the reason we're doing this is as follows. There are a couple of different sums that, that we can potentially have. If I'm adding Excuse me. Like I said, if I'm adding a zero and a zero, one and a, or if I'm adding a zero and a zero, uh, why do you do this to me? If I'm adding a zero and a zero, I'm simply gonna have a, my total can be zero. If I'm adding a one and a zero, my total can be one. If I'm gonna be adding a one and a one, my total can be two. However, if I'm adding a one and a one, and I've got a carry of one my total integer value kind of it in decimal would be three. So again, this is if we had kind of zero plus one, this would be, or zero plus zero, zero plus one, one plus one, or one plus one plus the carry. All right, so I'll call this carry. That's the only way we could ever have one plus one plus one. Why I'm telling you this is as follows. Um, the number that we are going to drop in and put kind of in our in our result over here, if it's a zero, will simply be a zero. If it's a one, it'll be a one. But if it's a two, remember what we said, we're gonna drop a zero and then carry a one. If we get this case, we're gonna drop a one and carry another one. So in this case, we're gonna put a one down and maybe I'll write plus carry, plus carry. The reason I'm telling you this is because what I want to make clear is that our in our result, we are going to append either a one or a zero. The way we're going to decide what to append is by taking the total that we have and taking mod two, mod two, mod two for all these. And that's how we're going to decide what's actually going to be appended to that result string. So what I'm going to say is result is equal to um, total uh, total mod 2 plus result. The reason I'm saying it that way, not plus equals result, is because we want to be adding to the front of the result string as we go, or rather, it's this way for you guys, I always get it backwards, um, as we go along, because we're, we're going kind of from backwards to backwards to front. So that's one thing we're going to want to do. As well, we are now going to need to update our carry. Um, what we can say is this, is we can say if um, if total is, um, we can say something like if, if total is greater than or, or equal to two, so if it's two or three, um, then what we want to do is we want to say uh, carry is equal to one. Otherwise, we're going to say carry is equal to zero. So if our, if our total is zero or one, we're not going to have a carry. If it's two or three, we're going to have a carry of, of one. Uh, I, I, I wanted to spell this out a bit, although there is a, a simpler and more condensed way that we can we can put this in, and that's simply that carry is equal to the total divided by two as a, as a floor function. So if we get zero or one, it'll be zero. If we get two or three, um, it'll, be, it'll be one. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it as this kind of one-liner here, but I, I just wanted to explain why that one-liner works first. So... We're just about done. This will almost get us through to the end. Uh, the one part that we're missing is 
on this scenario right over here. What happens if I've got a one carried forward at the end? Well, it should be quite simple. Basically, we're just gonna ask ourselves if, you know, if there's a carry, or maybe I'll just sort of spell it out, I'll say if a carry is equal to one, and it'll never be more than one, um, then we'll say result equals one plus carry. All right, well, plus result. I said that with so much conviction, it was just blatantly wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, so this should do the trick, and then afterwards we're just gonna return the result. So I'm gonna press submit, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Uh, I hope that explanation made sense. I, oops. So what I do here says unsupported operand types plus for int and string. Ah, so what I forgot to do was to say, let me actually take this, convert it to a string, and then add it on to my result. Because again, our, our result is just gonna be a, a string that's that's gonna be appending these kind of column totals as we go. Um, did I get myself stuck in an infinite loop? I did, and I see exactly what I did wrong. So if you guys were screaming at the, the monitor while you were watching this and uh, and not, you know, just screaming at me because I didn't get it, I forgot to do the obvious thing, which was to actually uh, decrement the pointers as we're going. So say I underscore B minus equals one, that should fix it. Um, I hope the third time's the charm here, otherwise I'm gonna really embarrass myself. And it didn't work. Okay, give me one second. Let me, uh, let me see if we can find this error. And I found the error. So, one big mistake that I made here was this was supposed to be or and not and. The reason that it's not and is because uh, originally, if we if we simply uh, if we say that both of these need to be greater than zero or equal to it, the second we get to the end of one, we're just going to jump out and not do anything else. That's blatantly incorrect. This strictly needs to be an or and not an and. I do apologize for that mistake. Um, it's harder than it looks sometimes to think and speak and code at the same time. Um, so that should be an or. The reason it should be an or is we want to go through this, like I said earlier, while there still exists a string for us to walk through. Um, that should do the trick now. And okay, finally it does. Thank you guys for watching. I do apologize for, uh, for the slight hiccup. I hope it still made sense. If you have any questions or any other questions you want me to answer, as always, leave them down below. Um, a like, a subscribe, I'll be eternally grateful if you give me them. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. Catch you guys later. Peace.